Hi guys and welcome to this week's edition of Behind the Frame. So this is the final episode in a three-part series. Remember a couple of weeks ago I asked you to vote on a couple of images which I thought would work for Behind the Frame and um, all the votes were actually so close so I decided just to use those three images for the, the next couple of weeks. Um, so a fresh batch of images coming your way from next week. Um, the final image that we're going to work through today in this uh, series on black and white images is of a beautiful young female leopard that we photographed in Mashatu. Now this sighting started off uh, the night before. Um, we had the female and her mother um, on a kill and the visual wasn't that good but we spent a bit of time with them, got some good stuff. We then went back the next morning, we found them in the feverberry thickets, uh, just the cub in fact, spent a bit of time with them. This is where it became vitally important to understand that you need to spend time in a sighting. So what started off as very difficult photography with the, the youngster stalking some guinea fowl eventually ended up with her moving across this open river and sitting against this beautiful steep riverbank. Um, and we spent probably the best part of two hours just sitting photographing her in different positions as she moved around and groomed and um, eventually uh, the mother came down and came across down the river so we got some incredible photographic opportunities in a morning but had we pulled into the sighting and just spent a couple of minutes there saw that there was nothing photographically at that point in time and then moved on we would have missed out on some incredible stuff. Um, right so onto the image itself if we have a look here at the settings uh, this was taken at 232 mils, um, so I was using the Canon 100 to, uh, 200 to 400 with the built-in converter. But in a scene like this, you really want to pull back, and for me, the most important thing here was the background. Um, yes, it's a leopard, but what really makes this image stand out is the background. It's interesting, it's got a lot of texture to it. It's also the scale of the, the frame, so pulling back to include as much of that um, that steep riverbank as possible. And the reason I'm at 232 as opposed to 200, I can only imagine that there were some distracting elements or that the top of the cliff um, is just above where I'm at at the moment in terms of the composition. So placing the subject down at the bottom of the frame, emphasizing that beautiful background. Um, settings wise, 1 500th of a second, this cat is not moving, that's more than enough handheld at that focal length, no uh, chance of camera shake there because the shutter speed is at least one over the, uh, the focal length. F5.6, giving myself a little bit of extra room so I could shoot at F4, um, but giving myself a little bit of extra because I want to preserve some of this texture and detail in here. ISO 1000 and underexposing by one full stop. So if underexposing by one full stop, the majority of the scene is darker than gray. And so I want to preserve that. This is what the camera would have given me if I had gone to just neutral and let the camera do it, which is fine. But when, especially because when I saw the scene, I had in my mind that this was going to work as a very nice black and white. I underexposed to protect the highlights on the, on the subject, but also to keep these dark cliff faces nice and dark. Then obviously an ISO of 1000 was in order to get that sort of shutter speed. So what that tells you is that there was very little light here. And this was early morning, deep shadow, the sun was coming in um, across the top of this hill and so probably about 20 meters in front of this leopard was where the sun was actually hitting. So deep shadow and that's why the ISO is so high here even though we were underexposing by one full stop. Right, let's get into the editing on, on this particular image. So the first thing is that, as, as I mentioned, I, this image to me just shouts black and white. So we convert it into black and white. It'll work really well in color, but black and white for me is the stronger of the two. Looking at the histogram here, we don't quite have the full set of darks and the pure whites in there. So immediately going to tease out some of the whites. But now there's two things that I'm keeping in consideration here whilst I'm doing this. The one is that when we work in black and white, remember we're working with color channels. And so if we look at color again, we've got these yellows here and oranges over here. And we're going to be able to manipulate and stretch those out to become brighter and darker, white and black, when we go into our black and white color mix. So I'm not going to be too aggressive with the whites or the blacks here. Just going to pull those down a touch. Clarity on a global scale. So we do want clarity across this whole scene here. So it's something that we can punch a little bit. You'll see that it brings out some of the texture. There's no point in using a, a very shallow depth of field here and uh, going in and localizing the clarity. We want everything in this frame to pop quite nicely. And we can add a touch on the dehaze as well. That's also just going to add a little bit of edge contrast to the frame. Our tone curve, um, looking at the lights and darks. Remember, this is contrast in the tonal ranges. This is where we're really going to start to see this leopard come alive by pulling out some of the contrast in there and just dropping the darks. 
touch and I'm looking at the histogram when I'm doing this you see that the now we have pure black the histogram just creeping over to the left hand side and the same on the shadows and you'll see if we just do a before and after on the on the contrast the tonal contrast you'll see how that's just made so much more of this detail here on the riverbank as well as our subject to come out um, cropping this patch of uh, shrubbery over there is potentially distracting that little piece of uh, bird dropping which has fallen onto the the sand in the front there that's also quite distracting but I don't think we can remove that from a cropping perspective I'm going to remove that distracting element at the bottom and keep the the droppings in so we're probably going to look at something like that which places our subject down on this lower third of the frame and emphasizes the height and the scale of this riverbank at the bottom there so at the top rather so somewhere around there that looks pretty good then in our black and white mix now watch what happens here so remember if we put this back into color we've got oranges and yellows and very little else so let's just swing this left and right and see what we're impacting. So you'll see that the oranges are very much more on the riverbank. I'll double click and zero those. The yellows more on our subject. So we want to lift the yellows because we really want our, our leopard to pop out of this frame and perhaps pull back those oranges a little bit. And you'll see that that then adds a little bit of extra depth and contrast to the image itself. Um, detail, we're going to go into our sharpening. Obviously, we want to mask out. Now, we usually mask out quite a bit, and you can see here that we're just getting that leopard. But remember, shot at a 5.6, there's very little that falls outside of our depth of field here, or our band of acceptable sharpness. So we're going to kind of pull this back a little bit and sharpen the whole scene up. And because we're working on the whole scene, we can increase the radius of the pixels that we're using. So instead of using one pixel on either side, we're just going to use 1.2. So it's a slight adjustment, but because we haven't had to crop out a lot on this frame, I'm happy to take that radius up a little bit. The sharpening, we can lift that up. And if we place our little dropper, remember you can click on this dropper and then decide, right, this is what we're wanting to have a look at. Um, you'll see that that's nice and sharp over there. So that's great. Localized adjustments on this image. There's two things that I'd like to do. The first is that this bottom section here is maybe a little bit darker, uh, sorry, a little bit brighter than what I would like. So competing with my eye and kind of pulling me away from the subject. So what I'm going to do I'm going to double click on the effect to zero the effect. I'm going to use the O for overlay to show you where we're working. And you can see that this graduated filter, and it's a linear adjustment that we're using here. We hit O for overlay. And all I'm going to do here is drop the exposure just by, probably by a third. And let's see, 0.2 looks good. Maybe just drop the blacks a touch. And you'll see that what this has done, if I switch that off, just darkens that bottom section a little bit and it actually brings it in line with what's happening up at the top here and in doing that whether your eye registers it or not when you look at this image you were going here and then maybe drifting down now you're kind of locked on here we can do another graduated filter and this time we're going to start up at the top here and drag it down again O for overlay so we can see what we're doing double click the effect so that that's zeroed that's the area that we're going to be working on I want to lift the clarity a little bit more on this and what we're going to do here as well is just drop the blacks a touch and exposure a touch we drag that down a little bit down to there so if we switch off both of these graduated filters that's what we had and that's what we're left with now. And for me, when you're doing this, you've always got to look at the image and say, right, what is the story that I'm trying to tell? Obviously, we want the viewer's eyes to go to this leopard. Um, and in doing so, we are drawn to bright areas and sharp areas. So the, the, the leopard itself is sharp as it is. Um, in clarity across the scene here, we're not going to be able to use clarity to kind of push and pull the viewer's eye. So we have to use exposure and contrast. So we've already got some contrast going on with the white of the leopard and the yellows here against this orange and darker background. But by dropping the exposure a little bit here, dropping the exposure a little bit here, we're kind of pushing your eye down to rest on the leopard. So we're kind of guiding and coaching our viewer's eye through the frame. Now, I would like to dial up... Um, just a little bit of extra contrast. I want this leopard to pop a little bit more here. And looking at this histogram, I want to lift out some more of those whites until we get a pure white, and you'll start to see that. Then, in our final image, that's where we've really got that contrast coming through quite nicely. So 
if we have a look at a global before and after, we've got our original image which shows the, the color version um, compared to our final black and white. And you can see that it really does add quite a bit to the, the overall conversion of being black and white, making the contrast pop a little bit more. I don't know, for me it's just a little bit more moody. Um, some people may want to go and grab a little spot removal tool and take away the bird dropping on the side of the rock there. For me that's part of, of the scene um, and part of an incredible scene. And you'll see on my Instagram story today, I actually asked the question is, what, draw, what draws your eye more in this image and why does it appeal to you? Is it because it's a leopard or is it because of this background? And so for me, the answer is simple. I got very excited with our guests when we were photographing the scene because of the background. It is very special, it's very unusual, and to me it just adds so much more to an image. It is a very different image of a leopard than one that I've ever been able to capture before, and this will be a memory for me for years to come. Um, there's still a, a lot of other images from this particular sighting, but this is a, a very special one for me because of that background. And so it goes to show that your subject is not the only thing to consider when you're photographing. The backgrounds are vitally important and if you've joined us on Safari you'll hear that all of our guides are always looking at what is in the background, what is the color tone of the background, how close is it to your subject and how can you use it to your advantage. So I hope this episode of uh, Behind the Frame has been useful. The last three episodes have been in black and white so if you've just jumped on to the bandwagon of the Behind the Frame series now, do yourself a favor, go check out the previous two episodes if you enjoy processing um, in black and white. And yeah, I'll be back with another image for you guys in the new week. As always, if you have any questions, drop me an email or get in touch via the comments on both the blog as well as our YouTube channel. That's it from me for this week. Cheers.